I'm okay now. So, if you clicked on this video, you know this is going to be my review on the new Ghostbusters movie. Warning, we'll have spoilers. So if you haven't seen the movie, don't go watch this review because it will contain spoilers. So, let's, uh, Let's talk about this new Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2016 that we're calling it now, what the kids are calling it. Um, so, uh, oh man, where do we begin here? Where do we begin? I guess I can say right off the bat, people want to know how bad it was. Okay, I'm not going to say is it good or is it bad because I'm just going to tell you it was bad. Now the question is how bad was it, okay? Look, I'm not going to say it's Independence Day or Independence Day resurgence level bad. It's not Independence Day resurgence level. It's not that level. I, I, that's like the bottom level. I mean, you, you got to try hard to get that level. But it's right around that area. Like It's in there. You know, it, it's like maybe a couple floors above it, but it's knocking on the fucking door. You know? Um, which is really a shame, really a shame, because there were parts and concepts of this movie where you could tell there is a good movie in there somewhere. There is, there is glimmers of hope spread throughout this film, and it could have been a good movie, a good reboot of Ghostbusters. It could stand out on its own. But it didn't, and I ball, and I blame Paul Feig, okay? I really do because he did not understand the concept of Ghostbusters. He didn't know anything about that world. So there are two things I really, really loved about this movie. The first ten to fifteen minutes of this movie. Man, it felt like I was back in that universe. The opening scene at that, that house, man, it felt like the music hits, man. It was like, man, it, this fucking feels like Ghostbusters, man. I fucking do this shit, right? And then it just, nah, through the rest of the goddamn movie. And then my second favorite scene was, was when Kate McKinnon just goes fucking insane on them goddamn ghosts. The fucking Ghostbuster music hits, man. He fucking pulls out the fucking do wheel. She's like, pa 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 pa. I'm like, fucking yeah, fucking yeah. That's fucking amazing, man. That's just the shit, man. And, and then what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. Two great pieces in the fucking movie, and you don't capitalize on nothing. Like, if the movie was more of that, it would have been good. You know, the, the when Kate McCann goes in there, and she, dum, 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 and it was like, man, if you had more of this, if you built more of this, it, it, it's different than the previous Ghostbusters, but it's good. You should have had more of, the, in the, of this, but you didn't. Instead, you have a fucking geek running around because nobody fucking likes him, decides to make devices that attract paranormal activity. That sounds so fucking stupid. It's fucking stupid. Why do you have to have a human villain? You know why the Ghostbusters movie was so great? Because it was a fucking spiritual Thing. The villain was fucking spiritual. It wasn't a fucking nerd who works at GameStop that nobody fucking likes. Besides, he wants to put fucking goddamn devices all over the place and go, well, nobody loves me. I'm gonna fucking destroy. Fuck you. That shit's fucking stupid. It's fucking ridiculous. The full fucking concept was fucking stupid. This movie goes out of its way to sit there and tell you that all male characters are fucking retards. The mayor's retard. Fucking, um, Chris Hemsworth is a fucking retard. Yeah, it was funny for the first five minutes, but nobody's that goddamn stupid. Even in the Ninja Turtle movie, Bebop Barack said he wasn't that goddamn dumb. This guy is fucking stupid. And you kill the main villain, the main ghost, by shooting him in the fucking nuts? Like, like, if you have a fucking agenda, fucking just say it. Don't fucking there. You fucking throw it right on the goddamn billboard. Men are stupid. Women are the greatest. That's what you're trying to say, Paul Fee. You're not trying to make a Ghostbuster movie. You're trying to fucking make a point. 
It's fucking ridiculous. They got the wrong motherfucker to direct and co-write this goddamn film. The wrong motherfucker. There was great moments in this movie. The cast of the four characters, I don't even like Melissa McCarthy, but she was good what she was able to do. The four women, Ghostbusters, were actually good. They were a good part of the movie. The problem is everything around them sucked dick. The cameos, the Ghostbusters cameos, with the exception of the Harold Ramis Easter egg, were just out of place, served no goddamn purpose, and, and the Bill Murray one. I just wish somebody would have just went in that theater and just fucking blew my damn brains out at that point because I was just, I, I was done with it. And it's why? Why? And then, you know, you, you think you're going to get this epic thing, like in the, in the previous Ghostbuster movie, when shit's about to go down, the climax about to go down, you have the fucking Ecto-1 going toward, you know, the building or the museum or whatever. You're escorted by police. You got the Ghostbuster music going, dun, 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 like going down. And then they all step out and blah, blah, get ready. No. Fucking Slimer hijacks Ecto-1 and then runs around the fucking New York City having a party with his fucking fat ass fucking wife while the Ghostbusters have to jog to the goddamn event. They have to jog. So we're sitting there while they're jogging. And then they got to destroy fucking uh, parade balloons. It's like, Jesus Christ, man. You had so many great moments that you could have capitalized. But no, you didn't do it because of your own stupidity and not, and you don't have the knowledge of the source material. The whole reason for rebooting a movie is to improve upon the concept. There is no improvement on the concept other than the fact that Kate McKenna's character came up with all these new gadgets on how to fight ghosts. That was a great concept, and it worked out well. I didn't, I wasn't a big fan of the proton brass knuckle thing, but it worked well in the context of the story. It's something that I would think would be a progression of the character from the previous Ghostbusters. But the problem is it's, it, the rest of the movie doesn't support anything. It's ridiculous. You you had Bill Murray play this character who feels like uh what's his name Walter Peck from the first movie, but not good. Most of the characters feel like they're just playing cartoon characters. That this is just a parody world. That this world isn't real. There's no damn way the mayor would be this cartoonish, this fucking stupid. There's no way. This movie feels like a fucking Saturday Night Live skit. If you would take the concept of the four female Ghostbusters and, and had someone else, like a Dan Aykroyd or someone, contribute to the script and make a script, you could do something good. This script, co-written by Paul Feig, is god-awful. God-awful. And it was such a great setup in the beginning. It, it was such a great setup. I was like, man, I am in, I am in, man, this movie, it feels like Ghostbusters, I'm in, I, I, I can forget that it's not connected to the other stuff, I can pretend it's in a parallel version of, you know, the previous Ghostbusters, this is like the Earth 2 version of Ghostbusters, I can pretend that, because I was so sucked into the first 10 to 15 minutes, and then the movie just, it, it just went out of its way, too much, just to point out how dumb men are and how stereotypical Leslie Jones is. She's not as bad as I heard, but she still has her moments where she's just playing a stereotype. And the fact that this woman played by Leslie Jones, a black female woman, why couldn't she be a scientist? And they point it out in the movie. They're like, we're three scientists. Oh, and we got Patty right there. You know, you want to talk about you know, having a statement with women power or something, you, you still don't even have the concept that maybe, you know, black people can be scientists too, you know? And they don't have to be you know, stereotypical characters. We want to fucking throw Michael Bay under the bridge with the stupid mud flat and skate going, yo, yo, what, yo, what? Man, what are you doing with Leslie Jones? It's the same damn thing, but nobody wants to call it out because critics are afraid to tell you exactly how this movie is. This movie has a fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and it shouldn't be fresh. It should not be fresh. This is not a 75, 76 rated movie. On, it's not. 
But the problem is, you have people going in with horrible expectations. They come out going, well, it wasn't that bad. That is not an expectation for a movie. It's not good to come out and say, well, it wasn't that bad. It was still bad. And then you have critics who are afraid to come out and say, it is that bad. Because they don't want to get bashed on the internet. No respectable critic wants to attach their name bashing this movie because they don't want the backlash. Well, guess what? I don't have a huge fan base. And the people that are on my subscribers, 75% of them don't like me. So I don't give a fuck. This movie is bad. It is bad. And the reason why it's so bad, because it had potential. There was moments of greatness within this movie. But no, Paul Feig wants to do his own fucking shit, and he wants to have his own goddamn agenda, and that's why you get this fucked up piece of shit film. That's why. Again, this is not Independence Day Resurgence level bad. It's not. It's not how to be single bad. It's the type of bad that you see could be good, but the director didn't want to do it because the director is not experienced with this source material. They should have got someone who knew about Ghostbusters to look over the script. Instead, once again, Sony shoving their fucking finger up their ass automatically rushes shit out, and this is what happened. That's why Marvel now take care of Spider-Man. And also, hey, another great idea by Sony, 21 Jump Street meets Men in Black. That shit's coming out. Look it up. So why trust anything from Sony? They buy, they, they buy these trademarks, throw the movies out there, don't give a shit what the script's like because they know they're going to get money. Merchandise. All that money they're going to get. They don't care. I hope this movie fucking bombs. I hope it bombs. And if, if it gets a sequel, for the love of God, Leave Paul Feig at home. Because like I said, there is opportunities in this film. There are opportunities. And if you get rid of Paul Feig, I think you can really capitalize that on that in the second film. I, I'm actually, like, like legit, if, if they come out tomorrow and say, we confirm a Ghostbusters 2, but Paul Feig is not attacked, I'd be legitimately... Up for that. I'm like, all right, let's do this. Let's see what happens. Let's let's go. Let's see who, who this new director, this new writer can do. But if Paul Feig is producing, co-writing, or directing as any part of the sequel. No, it, 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 it's just he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. So I think I said everything that I have to say. If not. If I, if I go take a break, come back, and I think of some more shit, I might just get on here and fucking rant again. Because I am fucking pissed. I am so fu- And the people, you people, you motherfuckers out there who sit there and say that this movie's better than Ghostbusters 2, you guys go fucking jump in a highway. And I hope you guys get ran over by 155 cars. Because there is no way, no way, that movie's better than Ghostbusters 2. What the fuck are you guys smoking? You guys should be ashamed of yourselves. You fucking idiots. Go run into a fucking wall. Take a very long walk on a very short bridge, you son of a bitches. That's my thought on the new Ghostbuster movie. Man. Robert Storm, my opinion. Go fuck yourself.